Now we come to the next part, which is called the refraction of light. So you can see here we have a few examples. Now, have you ever done this before where you put a straw or a spoon into a cup and you look at it and it looks a little bit bent, a little bit strange? It's as if the spoon has been cut into two. Over here also is a ball of glass, a droplet of glass, which is used to actually make words larger. Then over here you can see this lady seems to have a little bit of a hunchback, but it's not true. I'm quite sure she's pretty healthy. Um, this image over here is actually because of refraction. All of these images are actually because of refraction of light. We're going to talk about two laws of refraction, refractive index and the speed of light. So the first one is called refraction. Refraction of light is a change in direction or bending of light when it passes from one medium to another due to a change in the speed of light. Imagine that there are two mediums, what we call mediums. For example, if this is air and this is water and light is passing from air and it hits the water surface at an angle. If it hits it at an angle, you would think that light would just continue and go straight through the water. However, no, it doesn't. If it hits at an angle, it does a very strange thing. It actually bends and it bends towards the normal. You can see that this angle over here is slightly less than this angle. So let's talk about terms related to refraction. The first one is called optical medium. An optical medium is a transparent material which light can pass through. Then we have an optically less dense medium where the particles in the medium are further away from each other and the speed of light is faster. So if they are optically less dense, the speed of light will be faster. You will learn later that this will produce a larger angle. Now the optically denser medium would be where the particles in the medium are nearer to each other and the speed of light is slower. This would mean a smaller angle as you will learn later. So when light travels from air into glass or water, its speed would decrease. When its speed decreases, it undergoes a very weird thing where it will bend towards the normal, as you can see over here. A medium is said to be optically denser if it slows down the speed of light. So, when light passes from an optically less dense medium to an optically denser medium, it would bend towards the normal. You can see here that um, air, air is optically less dense and this angle over here is larger. Glass is optically more dense and therefore the angle over here will be smaller. However, when light passes from an optically denser medium to a less dense medium, it will bend away from the normal. So if it was coming from glass, if the light was coming from glass, this angle over here would be smaller. But once it hits the boundary, this light will actually bend away from the normal, creating a bigger angle over here. One exception is that if a light ray enters a medium that is perpendicular to the boundary, 90 degrees to the boundary, it does not bend. So you can see over here, if light rays shine right down and at 90 degrees to the boundary, it will just poop, it will just go straight through and the light is undeviated. This would be when the angle of incidence is zero. If the angle of incidence is zero, the angle of refraction is also zero. If it hits over here and this is the part where it's perfectly at 90 degrees to this part of the glass, it will just go straight through without refracting. So now let's do some practices. Please pause the video at this point and these exercises. Okay, now we are going on to revealing the answers. So over here will be quite simple. Okay, the angle of incidence will be this angle over here and the angle of refraction will be this angle over here. So angle of incidence will be 40 degrees. Angle of refraction should be 20 degrees. I hope all of you got that. So now let's go on to the bit that's a bit more difficult. Now for question B, did you identify the incidence and the refractor angle correctly? Let's take a look. Angle of incidence should actually be the angle from the incident light ray to the normal. Did any of you pick 35? Haha, then you would be wrong. Now this part over here, did any of you pick 60? If you pick 60, you will also be wrong because the angle of refraction is actually this angle over here. So this angle I will actually be 55. 
because a right angle is 90 degrees so you 90 minus 35 you would get 55 over here and the angle of incidence is 55 over here once again this angle should be 90 degrees therefore to get this angle you should get 90 minus 60 and therefore this angle over here the angle of refraction is 30 degrees so let's go to the final one this one over here if you did not draw a normal line you would probably have gotten it wrong so the first thing you should do is draw a normal line and then indicate the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction then this is seem more complicated however it shouldn't be that bad this is 130 degrees and this is 90 degrees therefore the angle of incidence should be 130 minus 90 getting you 40 and this one over here is 110 degrees but this part over here is 90 degrees therefore to get this corner over here it should be 110 minus 90 getting you 20 degrees next question given that glass is an optically denser medium than air please draw a possible refracted ray for the following diagrams okay the answer for this is that if air is coming in at this angle into glass you have to know that glass is an optically denser medium therefore um, first draw the normal line after you draw the normal line sketch a line that is closer to the normal line than this line making this angle smaller and this angle bigger so so you should have a bigger angle if it's less optically dense and a smaller angle if, if it is more optically dense so now we're going to draw a different one given that glass is optically denser medium draw a possible refractor ray this one is a bit different right oh light is actually coming out of the glass and going into air so how do we draw this we draw the normal first again and then we draw the line now you can see that i've once again made the angle in the glass smaller and the angle in the air bigger the law still remains if it is less optically dense like air you will get a bigger angle no matter where the light ray is coming from and you will get a smaller angle if it's more optically dense like glass no matter where the light ray is coming from so once again where should you draw the line from the air if you saw this line over here in the glass firstly just draw the normal line once again and then next draw an angle over here that is larger than the angle here in glass because it once again remains that the bigger angle in air is because it is less optically dense and a smaller angle in glass if it is more optically dense